can I um, welcome you to this celebration of the 10th anniversary of the Institute of Ageing. Thank you all very much uh, for coming. We have a, uh, we've had a full programme of events all day. Many of you have come to the other events that we've been holding and um, it's lovely to see so many of you here now. Um, this evening is a, a real celebration of the uh, past research and hopefully the future research that the Institute is going to carry out. Um, we have four very distinguished uh, speakers and the way the evening is going to um, pan out is, is that I will just say a few words in a minute about the Institute. Um, we will then welcome um, our distinguished panel who is going to reflect the research policy and practice uh, that we have been undertaking over the last 10 years. Um, uh, depending how long they speak, we may well break for tea. Um, if they speak too long, then you don't get any tea. But, um, uh, and then at 7 o'clock, we are launching uh, a new programme on population and the environment, and we have um, uh, Professor Sir John Beddington, who is the Chief Science Officer, who will come to launch that. And then afterwards, we will um, be joining, uh, hopefully with everyone, to... Um, uh, celebrate via a reception. It's called a catered reception, which means that there is wine and a reasonable amount of food. So I, I hope that you will all be able to stay um, for the entire evening. Um, it is, in fact, exactly 10 years ago that the Institute uh, was set up. Um, as those of you who were here at lunchtime uh, will have heard this story, but I'm going to repeat it, that uh, we uh, had set a, um, a small centre up um, and uh, we were going to... Um, we, I said to the VC, you know, is... is I want to move this into a large institute. And he said, if you can raise the money, then we will let you become an institute. Um, this was Colin Lucas, I say quickly. Um, and Help the Aged very generously gave us a donation. Uh, one of the problems was that Mike Lake, who was the Director General, didn't sign the paper. And the then registrar, David Holmes, said, you cannot launch the institute unless the university has got the money. Uh, and so it got nearer and nearer and nearer, and eventually it was approaching 11 o'clock on the day that the launch was about to begin. Michael Lake was meant to be giving a big speech as part of that launch, uh, and David Holmes, the registrar, stood by the door with the contract. And as the Director General walked in, he grabbed him, took him over to a table and said, sign here. And he signed, and David signed, and at 11 o'clock, that's how I know, on the 13th of June, 2001, the Institute of Aging was launched, so it is almost exactly uh, 10 years to the day. And that evening, we had a, a very similar lecture and dinner here uh, in St Anne's, and I talked about the kind of vision uh, that I had for the Institute and what we wanted to achieve. And sitting in the audience was the then Director General of Help Age International, um, and we're delighted to welcome Mark Gorman, representing Help Age International tonight. And afterwards, he said to me, you have a very ambitious vision. And I said, what's the point of having a vision uh, unless it's ambitious? Uh, what I didn't quite realise was that, in fact, looking back over the 10 years, um, we've achieved far, far more than that apparently very ambitious vision. Um, I don't think I ever thought 10 years ago that the Institute uh, would have three, uh, two research centres embedded with it, uh, one on policy challenges, one on migration, that we would have established six research programmes, uh, modelling demographic change, demography and economy, demography and society, biodemography uh, and health, uh, demography, innovation and education, and our new programme, uh, demography and the environment. And that we would have received so much research funding within that, that we would have established four regional networks in Asia, Latin America, uh, Africa and Europe, and that we would at the moment have an amazing 18 DPhil students. And I have to say that it isn't only an amazing number, they're also an amazing bunch of people and um, very much have contributed over the last two or three years uh, to the feel of the Institute and also a regular stream of international visitors. And so I was reflecting today, why was that possible? Um, and I think there are several things. Um, one very, very clear thing is that when you talked about population ageing 10 years ago, People didn't know what you were talking about. They looked at you sort of slightly blankly. Now you talk about population ageing and everybody wants to engage in a discussion because I think over the last decade we really have come to realise the importance of this tremendous global shift from young populations to old populations. Uh, and as me and my colleagues uh, and our visitors travel in different parts of the world, we are engaged not only by governments but also by the corporate world, uh, by the world of education, even defence, um, 
uh, general public, uh, trade unions, uh, most people have actually got it that population ageing uh, is going to be a huge challenge. Uh, the UK government, every single department in the UK government now has ageing populations uh, as one of its key challenges. The EU, the UN, the OECD, the WHO have all identified population ageing. And that clearly is one reason it was the right idea at the right time. And over the last 10 years, I think uh, that has um, uh, been shown. But it isn't also that. It's also that I have to thank the incredible support that I've had from the University of Oxford. Uh, and the Institute is very grateful to, in fact, three vice chancellors, both Colin Lucas, John Hood, and now our current vice chancellor, Andy uh, Hamilton, have actually shown us tremendous personal interest and support. Uh, and we also have to thank uh, two uh, registrars, David Holmes and our current registrar, Ewan McKendrick, who um, we're very glad to have with us uh, tonight. Again, for showing a personal interest and support for the Institute. Um, we've had amazing support from four um, deans of social, uh, three deans of social science, Donald Hay, Michael Spence and Roger Goodman, uh, and two deans of the medical sciences, Ken Fleming and Alistair Buchan. And without that kind of institutional support, uh, we would have gone nowhere. Um, but we also have to thank our key funders, um, and in particular, uh, James Martin of the Martin School, HSBC, Help the Aged, uh, and the Claw Foundation, and the Gulbenkian Foundation, all who over the years have given us uh, significant um, unrestricted funding, which has enabled us to be free to do the kind of uh, work we wanted to do, alongside the traditional funding that we as academics have been able uh, to achieve. Um, I think nearly all the major research councils, all the major social science uh, funders in this country have at one point over the last 10 years given us money. But I think the main reason why we've been able to be so successful is actually uh, my colleagues. And, and I want again to thank uh, the wonderful array of colleagues that have joined over the years. Uh, many are still with us. Many have moved on. And in fact, if you look at the major gerontology departments in this country and indeed uh, in Europe and Asia, you will find alumni of the Oxford Institute of Aging. So this is a real celebration of something that I think 10 years ago nobody thought we would achieve. And we thought we would reflect it by uh, looking at the main aims of the Institute and then choosing actually not only key players, but also our friends. So we invited uh, Dr. Richard Sussman, um, who is a head of the Social and Behavioural Section of the National Institute of Aging, uh, who will come and talk uh, about research over the last 10 years, reflecting that aspect uh, of our work. Uh, we invited Minister Lim, who um, was uh, until a couple of weeks ago out of the Prime Minister's office in Singapore, uh, and uh, his work, uh, I think, has transformed our understanding of what is possible in the realm of policy uh, and ageing. And we invited a, a long-term friend and supporter, Paul Kahn, uh, who was formerly uh, Head of International Development and Policy at Help the Aged and very influential at that time uh, on our institute as a former visiting fellow uh, and now runs um, uh, Age UK Oxfordshire. So in a minute we are going to um, have research policy and practice.